Welcome to The Extra Dimension. This episode is on the topic of Berlin, featuring Andrew Bailey, Stephen Orvis, and Christopher Bauhoff. Find the notes for this episode of The Extra Dimension at thenexus.tv slash TED5. As I mentioned, I'm Andrew Bailey. And I'm Stephen. And I'm Christopher Bauhoff for the time being. And you may uh, recognize that from the other show that we've done called uh, Control Structure. But we're not here to talk about programming news. Uh, we're here to talk about uh, my recent trip to Berlin. Uh, so, you know, this is a very long way away from here. Uh, and let's see. Up until this trip, I've spent maybe five hours outside of the United States. And I was over in Berlin for maybe, I don't know, 11 days or so. So nearly two weeks. So, uh, you know, of course, you know, one of the uh, reasons that I bought, you know, a fancy $500 camera was to take a lot of pictures. So uh, so if you're looking at the show notes, you might want to go into the Google Photos album uh, and like sort of follow along. So uh, the plane ride over there, uh, we had to, and by the way, this is like sort of like a family vacation. It was myself, mom, my brother, and his girlfriend going. Uh, but my brother and his girlfriend were already over in Amsterdam, and they uh, had to take the train into Berlin. And I guess they were in Amsterdam for a couple days before. Uh, so me and mom, we flew out of Columbus and, uh, connected in, uh, Chicago. And so when we get on the plane in Chicago, uh, you know, unlike, uh, most airlines, you know, they actually had a pillow and a blanket already on the seat. And they were like sort of, you know, maybe a little bit extra com size compared to, you know, most airplane, you know, am amenities. And they also had a little goodie bag, which had like a little toothbrush and some earplugs and like one of those nap visors you put over your eyes and uh, like maybe a few other things. But uh, yeah, like there was like all these goodies on every single seat, like even back in coach. Um, so it was only later that my brother said, yeah, you went on the nice sort of expensive airline. <laughs> So uh, we fly into uh, Tegel, which is currently the largest operating airport in Berlin. Uh, so I get over there, and this airport looks like the most ghetto airport I've ever been in. <laughs> like It looks like someone's unfinished basement. Um, but that was after we got off the plane. So... Like, when we were still on the tarmac, you know, they they let off the lights. It's like, okay, you can get your luggage out of the bins and get off the plane. Like, I wasn't sitting next to a window or anything, but I'm looking around, and I don't think we're at a gate. <laughs> so, <laughs> we were in the middle of a tarmac. <laughs> so, it which, you know, granted, you know, I've got off of a plane not at a gate before, but, you know, it was a little bit strange. This airport seemed to be a little small for what it needed to be. And I heard that, like, they're building, like, this huge airport just outside of town that, you know, will actually, you know, handle all of this. But for now, they, you know, they've been stumbling and whatnot for that. So we get off the plane. We make it through customs, which was, like, really easy. I just, like, handed them my passport and they stamped it. It's like, you know, welcome to Germany, whatever. Uh, and then, like, right behind there was the baggage claim. And, you know, my mom's putting the, uh, you know, both mine and her passports in her purse. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go get the luggage now. So uh, the luggage, you know, we only had, like, one piece. And, like, I have it wrapped up in duct tape. Not because of, like, structural issues, but just for identification. Um Pretty sure that might be the only one there with duct tape around it then. Yes. So, uh, you know, I I was only there for not even a minute. Saw it coming around. I grabbed it. And I turned around and I lost my mom. 
that's pretty bad. So, so I'm like, okay, I guess she went on through, but like she wasn't in like the next room. So I come back and like, I'm just staring at this crowd of people for a good five minutes and I'm not seeing her at all. And finally she emerges and I'm like, where have you been? <laughs> so like for the rest of the trip, you know, whenever like we came back through, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm getting the luggage. You stay here. Don't move. So uh, we needed to walk outside and go over to where uh, like the buses come because like there's not a subway connection to the airport yet or anything. And like we're, uh, uh, you know, walking through this sort of covered walkway outside and I immediately noticed that everyone is walking on the right. So, like, I noticed this, like, throughout my trip, like, almost every waking moment. If you are moving, you were on the right side of, like, the sidewalk or the road or whatever. So, like, you know, generally, about half the time I noticed this, I was not walking on the right. So, I see, because all the cars are actually going on the other side of the road, so you want to stick to the opposite side of the cars? Is that why? No, it's just because Germany is a very ordered, reasonable uh-huh. society these days. See. So, <laughs> yeah. They won't take that personally in Germany. Well, well, more on that in a moment. So uh, we finally get on the bus, and, uh, well, even before that, we needed to go to the central train station. So, you know, we get to, like, where you buy the tickets, and, you know, we can't really figure it out, you know. And then the guy's like, okay, crash course German. Okay, uh, like, train station is Bonhoff. And, like, if you ever encounter hopped on a word, it means head or main or something. So you want to go on the bus to the hopped Bonhoff. So you want to go to the main train station? Yes. So, so, so who is the guy giving me the crash course in German? Some random guy off the street? No, he was, he, I'm pretty sure he was, uh, like an employee of like the bus company. Okay. So, uh, you know, we buy the tickets, we get on the bus and we go here and this place is, you know, essentially like, it's essentially a glass house. And, uh, like the first picture is exactly that. So like you sort of notice like how it sort of goes across like, that's, like, where the trains come in, and that's, like, on the top level. And, like, underneath this plaza, there's, like, more lines going the other ways, but that's, like, in the basement. And uh, we needed to wait there for my brother to get in, and that was, like, maybe six hours or so. <laughs> so we spent a really long time in this place. Um, and pretty much every minute or two, there's a train coming in or going out. So... And, like, this is, like, intercity rail and, like, even, like, sort of, like, commuter rail, too. Um, so, yeah, we finally, you know, meet up with my brother. You know, first time I've seen him in a couple of years. Uh, so, after that, we get to go to the uh, apartment that we uh, had temporarily rented. It was at Airbnb place. That's pretty much, like, uh, we stayed at two apartments, uh, f- you know, out of Airbnb. And this is the first one. Airbnb, the company brand? Uh, it's like that app. You know, it's essentially a uh, like a service that allows people to, you know, if they're not home for a couple of days, can like rent it out to someone. I see. So uh, this apartment is decorated in sort of authentic 1970s East Berlin, like, you know, decor, I guess. So... Uh, even though it was like you know really close to the wall, I think it was actually on the western side. So, but if you like walked down the balcony and the wall was still there, and you threw a rock really hard, you could probably hit it. So, but uh, yeah, that was uh, sort of interesting. Uh, the uh, like the bathroom was like really long and narrow, and there was like only a single towel rack in there that could like barely hold like a single large bath towel. Like there was no hooks anywhere, which my which drove my mom nuts. <laughs> um, and the toilet in there was kind of interesting. Um, let's see, like the back three quarters of it 
how should I say, it was a poop deck. So, like, if you were, you know, just sitting there and you were, like, soft serving it, you might get some backup or something. Uh, which almost happened to me. It took three flushes to, like, get it all out. And, like, Thank you. pretty much all the toilets over there, like, it doesn't have, like, a handle or anything. There's a button, like, sort of, like, on the top of the tank. What? <laughs> so, Carry on. So, uh, you know, even though my brother knew some German, we could never really operate a washing machine with any kind of confidence. So, like, you know, it's, you know, it's just, I guess it's a general rule that uh, washing machines are kind of complicated to use. So you just picked random settings and pushed buttons till it turned on? Well, I mean, after staring at the, you know, the little manual paper for, like, five minutes or something <laughs> and like shad figuring out okay this means like flush out you know like you know drain out the water or something <laughs> so um but yeah our clothes managed to come out clean you know just put the detergent in there and like set it on for like 30 or 45 minutes or something <laughs> um so yeah that that was a decently interesting place so, uh, some of the landmarks around town. So, the, this is a, the next picture is a picture of the, uh, like the, the TV tower. Uh, I think it's technically called the Feinsturm. It's like a 1200 foot TV tower. And it's actually located in the former East Berlin. So, like, you could see this for, like, a very long way. Um, and, you know, because the sunlight is, you know, shining on it, you can sort of see, like, a cross. And that's called the Pope's Revenge. Um, so, and then, of course, there's the Reichstag, which is sort of like their capital building. It's where the legislature meets. Um, and the Berlin Wall actually ran uh, behind this thing. And then just maybe, like, a block or two down the street is the uh, the Brandenburg Gate. Uh, and if you look down in the middle here, like way in the back, you can see, uh, I think it's called the Victory Column. It's like uh, built for some memorial of the, some Prussian war. Uh, like I didn't actually, you know, walk down there and get up close to it or anything. But, uh, and, you know, the wall actually ran... S sort of in front of the Brandenburg Gate, but it was like technically on the east side. Uh, but there was, but but it was like so close, it was in the no man's land, so like no one could actually like get up to it. So uh, then in the East Berlin, uh, there's the traffic signals, and you know the walk don't walk lights are kind of interesting because they have, like, a little man on them. So uh, this one is the, uh, you know, the don't walk. And this is the walk. It is a, a very unique symbol for the walk and don't walk. Yes. I, I was thinking about the American ones are kind of cartoonish, too. But they're, we're used to them, so it's not odd to us. Yeah. So, uh, like, these, you know, these traffic signals are... Like sort of like symbols of Berlin, and and there's like T-shirts and like uh, cigarette lighters and stuff that have these you know symbols on them. They have each one. He has a hat on. Yes. Um. So let's see. Oh yeah. Speaking about cigarette lighters, uh, if you're outdoors in Berlin, about half the time you're breathing in secondhand smoke. It was kind of disgusting. So. Uh, then there's the street food. Uh, this next picture here, uh, is currywurst. That's essentially a hot dog with ketchup and curry sprinkled on top. It's generally served without a bun cut up with a fork. Um, and, uh, extra bonus points if there's also curry mixed in with the ketchup. So, and, and like in this particular statue here, uh, that's actually a bear holding up the, uh, like, the sausage there. And apparently, uh, like, the symbol for Berlin is a bear. Which, interesting you brought up bears before. Um, but that's, see the, uh, the fringe for that. 
Um, so uh, there's Currywurst, and there's uh, also another street food called Donner, which is sort of like a uh, gyro. Uh, it's the particular one I had actually had chicken in it. So, you know, it's like the same thing, like vegetables wrapped up in uh, pita bread. Okay. So, and there were lots of parks everywhere. Um, so did most of the parks seem very historical and, and long ago, or did some of them seem like had been more recent, just like, uh, there was, hey, you want a park? There was a variety of them. Uh, I didn't actually get to see them all. There's this one called the Tear Garden. Which is like essentially like their central park, but there is like that's like pretty old and established, and there are like others. Like, I think uh, some of them, especially the one Flak Towers, like was actually a military installation during the war. So, like, they sort of like tore down most of it, but they left like the rest of it as a park. And I think that's where quite a few of them actually came around. So, uh, one of my, uh, one of the highlights of the trip was, uh, so like there's a river that flows through town and like there's an island in this river and it's just full of museums. It's just called Museum Island. That sounds pretty neat. So, uh, unfortunately, like you couldn't actually take in any bags or cameras or anything. So like it was just like mostly stashed in, you know, a locker. And, like, we decided to, uh, you know, go around and, uh, you know, find some place to eat. And while we were doing so, I found this. <laughs> Bauhofstrasse. So I found where Chris lives in Berlin. Bauhofstrasse. Aha. A little bit nervous that you're going to start visiting me when I don't want you there. So, like, I just, look, I saw this, I looked up and I just started chuckling. And Mom's like... What's your problem? It's like, no, Bauhoff is my friend's last name. <laughs> so, so in this uh, particular uh, picture, you can sort of see that F and Z thing. Yes. That's called an ezet, and that's essentially like a strong S sound. So that's Bauhoffstrasse. Huh. So, and of course, you know, like most big cities, you know, have some sort of like a horse-drawn carriage going through. We didn't actually, like, write on these, but, you know, hey, yeah. they're nice and photogenic anyway. Um, so speaking of, speaking about uh, the museum island, you know, we uh, went there. I think there's like five or six museums there. Uh, we I visited, along with everyone else, the Pergamon, which is like an ar- which is an architectural museum. Uh, there's, uh, then we went to the, uh, I think it's called the Nuez Museum, which is like sort of like ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia and stuff. And then we went and saw the Greek and Roman, uh, museum too. So like apparently like a lot of archaeologists back in like the late 1800s, like a lot of them were Germans. And oh, this so they brought back to their homeland. Exactly. So, uh, like there's like quite a lot of interesting stuff in there. And then, you know, because we had to go outside for a while, uh, there was, like, the art museum. And I swear, every time we saw the line going into that place, it was longer. Like, every single time it was longer. Um, So, but we didn't actually want to go and see that one anyway. So, uh, and yes, we did get a day pass you know, like each one of us, you know, got a day pass that was good for like any one of those. Um, but, uh, you know, also like walking along like the outside walls of these places, you know, like they're essentially limestone. And I'm thinking, it's like, okay, well, you know, like I'm wondering why in the world like there's holes in these. And I'm thinking, it's like, well, there's two explanations. One is just so old that it's like starting to actually disintegrate. Or it's so old it survived the war, and those are bullet holes and shrapnel marks. Which is kind of disturbing to think about it. You know, because this is, like, this city was a war zone at one time. And, you know, over here in America, lots of people do not live in war zones. That's true. So, uh, 
why do you know why they didn't allow like the cameras and such on the island? Did they not want people taking pictures? Well, on the island itself is fine. It's just you know if you're actually going into the museum itself, they want an exclusive right and not having people take pictures. I think so. Okay. Plus, you know, these places are generally dimly lit compared okay. to the outside, so you're not going to get good pictures anyway. Um, which my mom actually found out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, like there's like lots of gold jewelry from like pharaohs and stuff. So, you know, there's, you know, sort of interesting uh, things in there. Uh, definitely worth a visit if you uh, come through there. And the U-Bond stations, like some of them have like sort of like distinct themes. A few of them look like they're straight out of the 70s and you like took the subway back to the 1970s. And this particular one is groovy. <laughs> so, and, you know, there, like, there's a lot, lot of, you know, old and new things. You know, this, you know, you know, because, you know, even though it was like, yeah, they're like, there's a lot of, like, war things over here. You, you look around and you realize this is a very modern city. So, you know, I have a series of pictures here that were actually taken from the... Uh, top deck of a double decker bus so like this particular one here is just like an everyday sidewalk um so you see like a shop you know out mm. on the sidewalk and then further down is a cafe and uh you can see like someone on, riding on a bike here but if like there's not a bike lane they go on the sidewalk and you can sort of see like the flat tiles yes there and like you can see like the uh like the smaller cobblestones like elsewhere so like I have a few uh, pictures here and uh, about half the things on the roads were cars uh, because there was a lot of bicycles uh, you know motorcycles and scooters there so you know not everyone has a big car um, in fact like the only thing I saw in Germany that seemed on average to be bigger than in America were strollers <laughs> Like, in particular neighborhoods, like, every woman, if she did not have a baby in her arms, she was going to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, and yes, we did shop at an Aldi. Oh, wow, they have them over there. That's where they're from. Ah, I didn't even know that. Yeah, so, uh, this particular one we went into was, like, actually painted mostly white. Um, they actually did have Coca-Cola in there. So did it feel at all like an American holiday or just totally different? It sort of felt like one. You know, it was sort of laid out in the same general mm -hmm. format. Um, so, like, I stepped in there and then I immediately regretted, uh, having mom with me because, like, she was looking at, like, all the jackets and stuff and sweaters in there. It's like, mom, this is, like, cheap stuff. <laughs> So, like, we didn't actually buy anything, but, you know, hey, it, you know, we actually went over there and was in one, so. And then, uh, so another uh, highlight of the tour is the topography of terror. Uh, this place is built on the former headquarters of the SS and Gestapo. So lots of very serious things happen, you know, on these grounds. So, like, there's... You know, a lot of posters here, you know, saying, okay, this, these are, like, the terrible things that the Nazis did, essentially. And, you know, I have a selection here, and this particular one is uh, about Jesse Owens. So, mostly because, you know, he's from Ohio, as am I. <laughs> and you lived there for a while, too. That's what I'm told. So, uh, you're always driving over there, too. Yeah, quite often. Um, there's stuff in Ohio that we don't have here, like logic, uh, straight roads. Yes. Clear signs, um, an absence of people saying yins, you know? I mean, basic human rights that... I like yins. Uh, I can't. <laughs> no. No, you know what? I give up. I'm, I'm over here on your computer. Uh, You're what? I'm over here on your computer. That's what I'm doing. No, look, Yins, no, Yins is not powerful enough to change because English needs a multiple y'all. 
But y'all is much more powerful. Why are you siding with yins over y'all? Because it's not as mainstream. That is exactly the pro- Language the- Okay, fine. Languages shouldn't be mainstream. You ready? Ready? No, 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 no. Okay, what did that mean? Nothing? Nothing to anybody out there except for maybe like some, some guy from the darkest corners of the planet. You know why? That's because language is about communicating with as many people as you possibly can. I'm pretty sure they'll figure out what yins is. Anyways. I don't think they care enough. Who's they, Andrew? The people listening, other people who are not present with us. So, dead people. Including them. But well, at long, as long as we're all inclusive, Okay. I'm very proud of us. So, uh, pretty much the only thing left of this, you know, Gestapo headquarters place, I believe, like, this part was the cellar. So, and if you look behind, like, that's the Berlin Wall back there. Okay, like, the, I'm, I'm, with the holes in it. Like, I'm not sure if, uh, like, that's, like, the original wall that was there, or if they had it moved, but, like, there was, like, the actual mark was, like, very close to there. And, yes, the label on the wall is accurate. It is madness. So it's, you know, one thing to, you know, learn and read about it in a history class. It's quite another to, you know, realize that that not only has this place had, you know, hundreds if not thousands of years of recorded history, but this thing happened in your lifetime and you can reach out and touch it. That's a little bit powerful. And, like, people died trying to get over this thing. <laughs> so, uh... You know, as you can see in the pictures, there's quite a bit of, like, bare rebar showing. And, like, I'm pretty sure that was because, you know, everyone was excited. Oh, the wall is coming down. And they pretty much beat it with sledgehammers a lot. (laughs) Uh, Or if it's just, you know, decaying, crumbling, you know, crappy commie concrete. So. Those dirty, filthy commies. Yes. So, uh, you know, just like walking down here, they apparently had these really crappy East German cars that you could apparently rent and drive around. <laughs> so those look a lot different than the other cars that I saw on the street and other pictures. Like those look like really old ones. Yeah. So and, you know, there is just a strip of these cobblestones going in and around Berlin where the wall was. And nowadays, people park on it. So then just down the uh, street from the Topography of Terror is Checkpoint Charlie. And right now, it's, you know, essentially like a little shack in the middle of the road that people take pictures in front of. So, like, I was, you know, just there and just started snapping pictures. And this guy was actually wearing the East German hat. So, and then, of course, Mom wanted to get her picture there. So, um, yeah, this is, like, one of the good ones. You know, pretty much whenever she was up there, I just started snapping pictures, like, once every three seconds or so. And, you know, I got maybe 20 or so. About three of them were pretty good. That's the nice thing with digital cameras. Film is cheap. Yes. So, um, then a long way away from there is the memorial to the murdered Jews of Europe. And it's essentially just a maze of featureless monoliths. You know, know, just like a sort of like an ordered grid and stuff. And it supposedly represents like the, you know, the loss of, you know, you know, sort of like losing touch with human emotions in an ordered society. Um, But yeah, it's, you know, sort of like a very interesting place to take photos and apparently Pastor really likes that one. Just, that is a nice photo. Yeah, it's just me lying on the ground, like, in the corner and just, like, looking up and taking a picture of that. So, and this is, you know, what it looks like from, you know, the outside. You know, it's just, you know, a grid of these rectangular, you know, concrete slabs. They didn't make them all the same height. They very yeah. intentionally made them different sizes and shapes and things. Yeah, like, as you can see here, like, it actually sort of, like, goes down in the middle. Yeah. So, and then just across uh, the street from this is the U.S. Embassy, which I thought was sort of strange, but okay. Um, Then back to the uh, apartment that we were staying in, 
uh, the first one. Uh, this is Bernard Strasse station, you know, like the subway station. And as you can see, remember those? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the wall went like right in front of this place and it was blocked off for like 30 years uh, because apparently this particular subway line terminated both ends in uh, West Berlin. So the commies didn't want, you know, someone to hop on the subway and get out of there. And, you know, nearby this station is like a little park. And like there's this sort of neat, I don't know, like a diorama or something or a map that shows where the wall was compared to where you are. So like you can sort of see the main one going there. And then like in front of it, like sort of like an inner wall or something. And then like the guard towers. And then where this map is. And that's the uh, the subway station right there. So they do the wall was it outside the city at all, or is it just within it, the city? It encircled the western part of Berlin. So apparently, like Berlin is actually a, sort of like a large city in compared to like the city limits, which includes like a lot of like forest areas yeah. and fields. You know, something that I would not call as being in the city, but is technically within mm -hmm. the city limits. So, like, this park, you know, essentially has, you know, uh, you know rebar on that uh, little ribbon going next to it. So, uh, Tempelhof Field. You know why this is important? No. So, uh, after the war, there was a communist blockade. This is, like, before the wall was built. There was an airlift that happened here. <laughs> that I've heard of. Yes. You know, this place is where it happened. Um... So, uh, like, I sort of, like, mixed up the uh, photos here on purpose, but, you know, I think maybe a couple days later, we went over to, like, the front of the, uh, uh, front of the airport, and here is the, uh, uh, I think it's, like, some sort of memorial to the pilots who died during the airlift. So, like, there's a lot of American names on this plaque, and you can, you know, sort of read Siegaben ihr Lieben which I think is means, like, you gave your life. And there's, like, a lot of names there. So, and near the front of the airport, there's this sort of plaza, and there's these eagles, like, on a lot of the buildings. And apparently, when they originally were put up, there were swastikas on these, but obviously they were taken down. <laughs> so, and, you know, this place was closed back in 2008 so like there's a lot of stuff growing in like the runways and stuff so but nowadays you know they have this big open space and now it's a park so like you know we went there just i think it was like on a sunday afternoon and like there was like lots of people biking and you know walking their uh, dogs and like they had their strollers of course there were some people had, you know, skateboards, some people were flying kites, and some people were doing both at the same time. Wait, they were biking and flying a kite? No, skateboard. Oh. Like, sort of like hang gliding or something. <laughs> that sounds kind of fun. So, and, you know, because there's this huge open space that might be a little bit large for a park, uh, there's also, like, a lot of community gardening going on there. So, and sunflowers seem to be quite popular so and some people got creative and like were planting things in shoes and putting them up on shelves and like this other uh, person had like a dome with vines on it hmm. which i sort of had to sidestep away before i took the picture because there's actually someone in there <laughs> so and so, so these aren't uh like they don't own this place they just kind of have like they're able to come and plant their own stuff there. Apparently, this is this is like sort of like the you know the billboard next to it. Uh, so I I like this. You know, this is a place for urban gardening, a meeting point for the neighborhood. This is not a party area. <laughs> this is. <t> huh. <laughs> it's interesting that it's in English. Yeah. So you know, a lot of stuff was bilingual there. Okay. So like most of the restaurants had bilingual menus. Hmm. Um, so, uh, let's see, I'm not sure you've, you've never been at church when, uh, pastor does his, you know, little story about when he went to Ukraine and he was like trying to learn, 
I think like Russian, I think. And, you know, he's, you know, they're like, okay, so kartoffel means potato. And like, apparently that ground his gears a little bit. He's like, just call it potato. <laughs> like, what do you call it kartoffel for? <laughs> but, uh, you know, like on the, uh, menus in Berlin, thanks to that, I knew what kartoffel meant. Uh-huh. It, it's also means potato in German. So, like, I actually looked it up and, uh, apparently the word comes from the Italian for truffle, like the actual plant truffle. Oh, okay. So, pretty much every language east of German uses kartoffel for potato, including Russian, apparently. So, so, uh, let's see, it was, uh, yeah, after we went to Tempelhof the first time. That we went to the Humboldt Thane, uh, like, sort of, like, defensive point. Like, there was, like, a few flak towers here, and they were used during the war. But wait, 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 so what was the wooden thing? This this was, like, sort of, like, on the top where the turret was. Oh, okay, so it's just a random art. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, most of the place was covered with graffiti, so... Okay. But, uh, like, you could see a, you know, fairly long way on top of here. And as you can see, like, the whole like, area is completely flat. It is flat, wow. So, huh. um, so, uh, except for one thing, uh, so there's, uh, the Devil's Mountain, uh, that you could see up from the Flak Tower, and it's not so much a mountain as a huge pile of rubble with some dirt on it. So is it, like, a, do you know what the, the thing behind the name is, or is it just they gave the name well probably be because it was like the trash from the war oh okay so it's like yeah like that's really bad so like the devils so they, they, they like literally just took the trash and dumped it all there pretty much out of it. okay so like i'm not exactly sure like which points around town all of these are but you know it's nice to get a you know good view of things so and you know this is just a picture you know of the park mm -hmm. that was in and as you can see, uh, you know, the picture is taken on the, you know, the right edge of the path. Yes. So, um, as far as restaurants go, um, there was, like, a Sudanese, uh, like, a local Sudanese chain, which, uh, you know, seemed to be, you know, sort of like a very local independent thing, but, uh... Uh, let's see, there was that. We went to a Mexican restaurant. We went to an Irish pub, which is pretty interesting. So we went there and, you know, it said that they had food. But apparently having food is like a guy outside in a trailer <laughs> <laughs> that, sells <laughs> that sells fish and chips. We had food. <laughs> so, uh, like, we get in there... And, like, they had, like, live music. So, like, we sort of, like, go in, like, almost towards the back. And it was, like, up on this platform. And uh, so we're like, okay, well, let's get something to drink. So we go down, like, I, I order a Sprite. And, you know, others, you know, do that. But I'm like, okay, well, I've sort of told them what I want. So let's go back to the table. And, like, I'm the only one back at the table. Then I look up. And I'm like, okay, that's, like, weird things up there. So then, like, mom comes over, and I just point up. And she's like, where in the road are you pointing up for? And then I just, you know, sort of, like, glance upward, and she looks up, and she's like, what? <laughs> like, so just above this particular table we were sitting down at, there was a ton of panties up on the, <laughs> up on the ceiling above us. <laughs> so... <laughs> it was like it was the best place to go to, <laughs> but yeah, you know, at least the fish and chips were good, and you know we enjoyed some nice Irish music, so uh, that was interesting. So uh, then, towards the end of our trip, uh, we went to uh, Sachsenhausen. Uh, you know, very serious stuff happened here. Because this was a former Nazi work camp. So, and this is like sort of like a diagram of, you know, what it looked like. And, you know, this is the buildings that are still standing. 
because uh, you know after the war, uh, you know this is outside of the city limits, so this is technically in former East German territory. So you know, unfortunately, when like the Soviet army came through, they didn't exactly stop using the camp for a while, <laughs> but they like finally stopped using it about 1950. And then in around 1963 or so, they realized, oh, we should probably, like, make a memorial to this place, you know, to, like, the people who died here. Um, so, like, they tore down, like, most of the buildings here, and about ten of them still stand. So, and, uh, let's see, a few of these are actually in the guard gate tower thing. Um... So here's like the, you know, so like the chain of command uh, with Heinrich Himmler being at the top. So this is, you know, the actual main gate building. And if you zoom in enough, okay, you can see, was it Arbeit Nacht Free, which is German for work makes you free, <laughs> which is a very dark thing to say when this camp is meant to work people to death. Uh, one commander here used to tell the new inmates that the only way out was through the crematorium chimney. So, yeah, a lot of serious stuff happened here. Uh, so, like, a few of these pictures, I'm just, like, walking, you know, through, straight back through the gate. And here, uh, the plaque says, Sight of the Gallows. You know, this grassy patch here. Uh, apparently hangings were relatively frequent and attendance was required for all prisoners and they couldn't look away otherwise they might find themselves up there so and this little tower and statue i think is the you know part of the east german memorial and you can see pretty much you know on the base here you know the countries of all the victims and they're pretty much all countries in mainland Europe, pretty much every one of them. And uh, this particular one is like looking back towards the gate. Uh, but you know, all around you see these gravel plots, and these are where the buildings used to be. Okay. Um, and you know, I'm not sure how many guard towers they originally had, uh, but they built, I think, maybe at least 10 or so. I'm gonna go forward here. So this is the site of the first crematorium, which implies there were more. Uh, so they essentially built these because the trenches were getting too full and they couldn't risk shipping large quantities of corpses to other facilities. Otherwise, people might get suspicious that they're killing a lot of people here. And uh, yes, they did have some gas chambers, but like they weren't exactly used as much. Because, you know, this was essentially made, you know, for a work camp, not an extermination camp. But that didn't mean that people didn't die here on purpose. So uh, one of these buildings here uh, is the uh, infirmary, which they did some nasty experiments on people. And uh, just off to the right is where the mortuary is. And, you know, that's still standing and I actually went in there. And you can see, you know, the tables where they used to put corpses to pop out, like, any kind of golden or silver fillings in the teeth. And at some point, they were actually harvesting skulls for, like, some uh, science study or something. I've heard something about that with the Germans and the skulls, about them liking to collect them. Yeah. So, uh, this is the prison inside of the concentration camp. Think about that for a moment. You're already sentenced to the concentration camp, and now there's a prison inside of here? <laughs> it can get worse. Yes. Uh, so there's there were originally three wings to this, uh, but only one is still standing. The rest of them are just foundations like these. And in the one that was still standing, uh, like in some of the cells, they were actually like memorials, like pictures and flowers to people who were actually in here. Uh, this next picture, like these little columns, I don't recall a plaque being here, but you don't need one to figure out what happened here. So then uh, back in the guard tower, like that was, you know, actually exhibits on like the guards and the uh, people who are actually running the place. Uh, you know, there were like all sorts of guns and stuff. 
but I kind of like this particular one, this number six pistol here, uh, came from the estate of H.J., a survivor of the concentration camp. In 1995, he informed the memorial site in writing that he had a privately owned pistol that once belonged to an SS block leader uh, and that it had been stolen from him uh, by a prisoner. It's not actually implied that, you know, this man actually stole the gun. Maybe someone else stole the gun and gave it to him. So uh, then just outside the gate uh, is like a part of the uh, East German memorial uh, that they built originally. And this is just a kind of nice looking stained glass window when you uh, initially come in. Um, so like there is, you know, again, some of the other you know exhibits in here. But, uh, you know, all this made us depressed. And at this point, you know, after going to all these, you know, street side cafes, uh, we decided on to have something like maybe more authentic German. And we went to a restaurant that essentially looks like Grandma's house. <laughs> so this is inside Zur Haxa. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, if it wasn't a restaurant, you'd think you were in Grandma's house. So, um... The I remember the sauerkraut here being actually better than most sauerkraut I've ever had. <laughs> and, like, I mentioned this to Mom, and she's like, well, you have sauerkraut all the time, you know, when you come over home. It's like, no, Mom, that stuff is from a can. <laughs> 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 so, um, uh, let's see, then another place we went to. Uh, so, we essentially woke up about 9 or 10 o'clock every morning. Uh, which is when, like, a lot of the places open over there. Um, so it wasn't until maybe about a week after we were there that we had breakfast at a place. So we went to the California Breakfast Slam, which, you know, has, you know, pancakes and stuff. I actually wanted to go here because I just, like, needed some breakfast. And pancakes sounded really good. <laughs> so, um... Let's see. Then, yeah, I also had the website for Zerhaxa. But, uh, yeah. Um, then after that, it seemed like... Uh, uh, so the day before me and Mom left, uh, my brother and his girlfriend went off back to Amsterdam because they were flying out of there. So that meant that me and Mom, you know, could, you know, do whatever. And that's when we went to the uh, Aldi. Oh, okay. Um so most restaurants have, uh, uh, they serve Coke and apparently Fanta, like a lot of places had Fanta over huh. there, like insane. It wasn't until like after a week or so that we went into, uh, I think it was like the Euro shop, which is sort of like their Dollar Tree, except a different currency. Mm -hmm. uh, it was only in there that I actually found a Dr. Pepper. Ha! <laughs> Hey, this is the cheap stuff. <laughs> so, you know, I was sort of, like, thrilled, and, you know, I just had to have it. So, um, yeah. Uh, so then, you know, the last day we had to get back to the airport, so we uh, walked over to, like, the, you know, the main street, you know, you know, nearby. And, you know, this is at, like, 5 or 6 a.m. in the morning, and... Uh, so uh, we get on the bus, and because we couldn't actually buy a ticket ahead of time, we actually had to buy it on the bus. And, uh, you know, I went up, and, you know, generally what I would do is ask Sprechen see English to actually, you know, get it to somewhere where I could understand yes. it. And this particular bus driver is like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't say anything. But I'm like, oh, crap, this is going to be hard. <laughs> uh, so, you know, eventually negotiated two tickets. <laughs> you know, essentially like a, I think it was like the day pass for, you know, like the inner city or something. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and then it was like, two, please. <laughs> and then mom was right behind me. I'm not sure if she was gesturing or something. But, like, she reached up and took the first ticket. Danke! <laughs> so, uh, oh, yeah, I've, I forgot one last picture here. I did not take this one, but, you know, it's actually on Wikipedia. 
but uh, in one of the uh, one of the barracks, uh, there is this washroom here, and you know there is plaques on the outside and plaques on this sort of silk screen back here, um, and I think it was collaborated on both that uh, you know this this wasn't exactly a eyewitness, but this is like an account of you know uh, so. Actually, step back a little bit. So, like, these large basins here, mm-hmm. like, for, you know, to wash hands, and then there's, you know, basins for washing your feet. So, but if, you know, you washed your feet in the hand basin, the guards would not like that a, a lot. So, uh, this one particular account is, uh, like, from two people who were near here and, you know, one time, you know, heard screaming and beating coming from this room. And in the next morning, there was a corpse on those foot basins. And at that point, I was reading this. I was down there reading it off of that silk screen. I'm like, I just walked past that. Like, <laughs> through that. I have a question, but it's a little bit dark. You were annoyed. Not you, but these guys were annoyed about a sanitary measure. And they are so annoyed... That their their answer is to beat someone to death and leave the corpse there. Now I like to think of myself as a logical person, but like there was this that's up for debate. <laughs> that I think of myself as a logical person, but that he is logical. Yes. That, okay. First of Wait, all, so I if explained he's this like five times, not logical, but he thinks he's logical, then that would show his in logic by. So I am being logical by thinking that I'm logical. Unless, of course, I'm being illogical, in which case I think I'm logical. Let's step away from the Stanley Parable. I love the Stanley Parable. Okay, I just think that it's a little bit counterintuitive to try and enforce some sort of health code by leaving dead bodies around. (laughs) You know, like there's this woman, and she insisted that even though there was a little hose for her dog where dogs could like drink water. She picked her dog up and fed her dog water from the human part of the water fountain. Okay, you know what I didn't do? I didn't brutally murder her and her dog with a rock and strap them to the water fountain. So that no one else did that. It just so. So what did you do? I told her that's not where the uh, there's a little thing there for your dog. She's like, it's okay. But I, so, I was with the church group, so you can't... So no you, murdering with the church group. So you likewise disagreed with the course of action of the guards? I wasn't there. I don't know what the guards did. Maybe the guards just said, hey, they, they beat be a, careful. They, they beat a guy for washing his feet in the hand basins and then left the body there. You can't prove that. I'm not saying they didn't do it. I'm simply saying I believe in what people have actually seen. Okay, they heard screaming and beating sounds. That could be a lot of stuff. I've hit you several times. So, and just to let you know, enjoyed it each and every time. So you are implying that there is a possibility that the guards beat one of their own in no. that room. Okay, there's a chance that whomever was washing or, their feet and or hands in the wrong feet hand basin, they said, hey, you knocked it off. And then someone else could have beaten it. I'm just saying I wasn't there it seems or, illogical for the or have done that. Or are you trying to imply the possibility that the prisoners beat another prisoner? I'm which, not trying to apply anything. Which, which, come to think of it, may have actually happened in a few <clears throat> places. Okay, so I'm just saying, let's let's just be very careful about... I'm not saying the Nazis were good guys, okay? You know, we can all agree that they did bad stuff. I'm just saying that overall, let's remember what the evidence actually is. Because apparently there are now people saying that there was no Holocaust, which, I mean... Besides all the eyewitness accounts and the pictures and the actual, like, you know, artifacts from the Holocaust, the people who actually did it admitted to have doing those things, you know? Yeah. It's like saying, oh, there was no slavery in America. But what about the people who were slave owners who said, man, I, I love owning some slaves. Like, are at they, that point... Are they in on it, too? <laughs> yes, yes. They're like, wow, this is going to make me a good 100 years. You so, know? so uh, you know, I actually have some artifacts for my trip. You know, one of them being <clears throat> a plug adapter, which takes an American plug on one end and you can stick it into a European socket on the other. Uh, but it doesn't convert voltage at all. So you got to be careful what you plug into it, that it can handle 220 volts. And I also have some of their Monopoly money, I guess. 
So, I mean, unless you have like a magnifying glass, you can't actually see some of the micro printing on here, but you know, that's pretty cool. And like, there's, you know, some of the, some of the features are raised. So, you know, you can actually like trace out the zero on the hundreds. So what was your common, like, say if you're buying breakfast, like how many of those <clears throat> things did it cost? Mm, so breakfast tends to be pretty cheap, like everywhere you go. So it was probably like five or so. Okay. Like, so is that their smallest? Because I, I see you have different ranges there. Is that the smallest denomination they have? Do they go down, down to one? Smallest smallest denomination of note. Uh, no, that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. Like they don't have a one euro note. Uh -huh. So uh, they have one euro coins. They have two. And then, you know, of course they go down to cents. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, pennies over there were kind of rare. So, like, you know, generally things were, you know, denoted in, like, 10 or 5 cent increments. So, uh, let's see. Then I may have accidentally not declared some chocolate coming back. <laughs> so I take it away from you if you declare it? Maybe, but, I mean, it's a packaged good that's been processed. So... I mean, like, there's not going to be any kind of live bug inside of there. So That's what you think. You've never had German chocolate before. How would you know? I actually have had German chocolate. Because once I got back here and realized, oh, crap, it was consumed immediately. <laughs> Just to make sure. So, um, let's see. Yeah, I think that might be about it. So, any questions? I did look up the birth rate in Germany, and supposedly it surpasses Japan in having the lowest birth rate. So, did you read something about the pro-natalist policy? Uh, no. Okay, so, like, they really want to encourage, you know, births. So, like, there's, I think, like, maternity leave over there by law is something like eight months. And I see. And <laughs> so you get a good vacation for having kids. So there's also paternity leave that is that you can take like at least two months off, I think. But yeah, it it is a thing that does exist. So um, I actually want to post some of these pictures because uh, our good friend Ian Buck uh, went to Sweden last year. And he just posted, like, just some random photo of the street. And he's like, how can you tell that this is a European street? <laughs> so I think I might do that, too. Um, so, yeah, and I don't think you have any questions over there because... Uh, we've, we've been through this. Yeah. Yes, we have been through this. So I guess I will stop boring you. And you probably... Wait, so after 18 months of knowing you... You choose now, tonight, what is it, nine, ten o'clock, now, after all this time, now you've decided to stop, Oh. Okay, so, uh, I guess we won't, none of us would be having a, uh, the extra dimension, so if you submit any questions or feedback to this show, I guess you will get those either directly from me, or hear them on the next control structure. Which should be in about two weeks. So, uh, have a good one. You too.